So Robert, I'd like to talk to you today about a concept that I consider to be very important in negotiation called the first 180. It refers to the first 180 seconds of a negotiation. And the argument that I want to make is that negotiation tends to be a three-stage undertaking involving setting the stage or the process, managing the concession-making and trade-offs in the middle of the process, and obviously the final stage of closing the deal. A great deal of negotiation commentary and thinking has been spent on how best we close the deal. The argument that I want to make today is that we spent a lot more time analyzing, understanding, promoting more effective practice in the earliest stages of negotiation that we, in fact, would get to better deals in the last stage of the negotiation. And so the first point that I want to make is that beginnings really matter in negotiation. A lot happens in the first 180 seconds of a negotiation. For example, if I'm working with you, I set the tone of the negotiation. I tell you something by the way that I sit, by the way that I talk, by what I say, about the mix of cooperation, competition, and indeed collaboration that you can expect today. I try in my preparation to set the agenda with you and in a way that's hopefully favorable to my interests and address it most of yours. Equally important, I try to shape your expectations about what's going to be possible today. I want to, if appropriate, indeed set an anchor for my number, for my goal, for the facts, for the issues that I want to put on the table. So the first 180 is about signaling the roadmap. It's about where we are going to go today, my expectations for you in this negotiation, and some sense at least given to you of what I hope to achieve in this negotiation. Professor, can you explain to me again just why the first 180 is so important? I think that and this point really needs to be uh, emphasized. There's a phrase that we often use, uh, sorry, we got off on the wrong foot. And what it means is that in negotiation, if I say something that offends you, if I sound as though I am not prepared, if I throw out a number that seems ridiculous to you, the negotiation has almost failed before we've begun. So it's very important uh, to signal respect. It's important to signal some sense of a collaborative problem-solving uh, orientation. And it's very important to shape your expectations as to what will be possible for you to achieve here today. Okay. You mentioned setting a collaborative tone. How do I ensure that my collaborative tone is not interpreted as simply weakness? I think it's important to emphasize that just because we want to work together uh, does not mean that either party is presenting themselves as a pushover. I think that in today's complex world of solving public problems, uh, we can't get there if we don't recognize the mutual degree of interdependence that's required, the joint decision-making that's required to get the work done. And so I think it's important uh, to signal uh, to the other party, at least as we practice and internalize what it means to be collaborative, that we signal to the other party our intention is to work with them to get a better result for them as well as for us. And I think that protects you against appearing weak or vulnerable in the negotiation. You talked before about anchoring in your first 180. Yes. How do I know or how do I decide what level I should anchor at? I think that based on your preparation, 
based on your understanding of the other side's interests, based on your best analysis of the strength of their BATNA, their walk-away alternative. You put down a number or piece of information uh, on the table uh, that appears credible. And what's important is to get a reaction from the other side that isn't completely negative, uh, outrageous, or indeed that they don't want to negotiate with you. But in the first 180, and as they respond uh, in general terms to your agenda, to your priorities, I think with practice you will get a good feel for where to place that important first offer on the table. So in sum, the first 180 reminds us that beginnings really matter, and beginnings matter because they launch the beginnings of a productive confidence-building and trust-building conversation.